Recently, I was asked which photographers or artists have inspired me the most. What some found strange about my answer is that I have always found more inspiration in my photography from painters and sculptors than other photographers. That's not to say that I don't find inspiration from photographers. I find inspiration from all of you and many of the famous and not quite as famous photographers of the past. For me, answering that question didn't stop with the Q&A video. I've actually been thinking a lot about it. I look at my own YouTube channel and site and see two main themes, the process and the image. Both are extremely important and you generally cannot have one without the other. The most famous artists that we celebrate today were rule breakers. Often, their rule breaking turned into the rules for the generations that followed them, only to be broken again sometime later. Some of the true greats pioneered both new processes and results. The majority of my videos are about the process, both the creative process and the physical process of using your camera. I've shown you various different cameras and an evolving selection of lenses. We've walked through menus together, set dials and switches together, and we've hooked it all to studio lighting. Even after a few hundred videos, I still have many more processes that I'm eager to talk about with you. One thing I've realized over time is that photography is a process that I enjoy. I certainly view it as an art form. I'm very much into flow, and when I'm taking pictures, I feel flow. What is flow? <laughs> there are so many definitions. For me, it's my happy place where nothing else in the world matters. I experience flow during other activities like when I go on a long run or swim in a lake on a summer day. Photography though is my happiest of places. Now let's talk about the image. When a day of shooting out in the woods is over, flow has been achieved, but there's one thing left. And sometimes for me, the image feels like the unfortunate outcome of the process. I know that sounds strange, so let me explain. I enjoy the act of composing and capturing images, but I'm also the harshest critic of my results. I look at some of my photos and say, wow, I'm glad I was having fun taking these pictures because they really don't look like anything special. Dare I say that digital photography and the ability to take thousands of photos in an afternoon has maybe, in my mind, cheapened the intrinsic worth of any one photo. I struggle saying that though, because at the same time, digital photography has given us the ability to readily and conveniently take any one of our photos, dress it up a bit, remove the color, add color, and even replace critical elements to transform the image into something entirely different. Sometimes I've criticized extreme amounts of Photoshop work, while other times I've found myself creating collages and juxtapositions within images that never would have been possible in real life. Our computers, even our tablets and phones, are extremely powerful tools. These are definitely good times to be a photographer, designer, or anything in between. If you know me from my site or Facebook page, you know that I live, breathe, eat, and sleep photography. I always have a camera with me. I have a confession to make too. I have thousands of digital images that I haven't even looked at. <laughs> this goes back to earlier when I said that sometimes I enjoy the process more than the images. Something is changing in me a bit. I don't know where it's coming from, but I think I know a few of the contributing factors. One, working with this printer has caused me to have a new focus on the image itself. What's funny is that I haven't been using it that much. Maybe I'm a little apprehensive about seeing my images, you know, on paper, holding them in my hands and, you know, seeing them in a way that, you know, I can't just press the arrow key and go to the next image or another key to boost the contrast or remove the color. When they're on paper, you know, they're the real thing. Suddenly there's more to it than just a file on the computer. When you have the image in your hand, the process is secondary. There's no EXIF data to look at, no color sliders. I can't go back and change anything. With this print in my hand, the process doesn't matter, <laughs> at least not anymore. Now the image simply is, 
it's final. <laughs> it's complete. There are no adjustments to make. Metadata to look at. Is it cropped? What lens did you use? What ISO? Are the colors adjusted? Doesn't matter. It's on its own now. Okay, I'm probably scaring you guys now. <laughs> You're like, okay, someone didn't take their medication this morning. <laughs> but just go with me on this. My perspective is changing a little. Maybe this is a coming of age moment. The process is very important to me and I will keep making videos about the process until long after you all stop watching. But maybe, just maybe, I've been shortchanging the image as its own entity, separate from the process. The problem that I have is that I try to be a gearhead and an artist at the same time. Both can certainly coexist and I've leaned heavily toward the gear and process in my videos. For me, Photography has not only been the means to creating an image, but it has also been an end on its own. I've also been very, I don't know, linear in my view of the process. Grab the right camera, the right lens, and you're good to go. Well, what if you grab the wrong camera and the wrong lens? What then? What happens to the image? What if you use your phone to capture the image? Your tablet, a Polaroid camera, what if you build your own camera? Can any of these make the image right or wrong or just different? Give me a day or two and I'll talk a little more about this. In the meantime, talk to me. Have you ever had that moment where you decided to think and work differently? Maybe a little different or maybe you changed your perspective entirely? And what happened when you did this? This is probably deeper and more philosophical than most of my videos. But you're always welcome to tell your story in the comments or send me an email to secrets at snapchick.com.